All right, guys, welcome to the MMA Fight Game Podcast. We are actually back with a friend of the sh- uh, the channels, Pompos Gregorio. Last time we spoke with Pompos, uh, he was getting ready to defend his 135-pound Bantamweight title at Combat FC4 against Chris Motino. However, if you watch the, the, the interview with Pompos, he says if the UFC comes calling, he's signing. Well, he signed. He is going to be appearing on week two, August 15th of the Dana White Contender Series against Cameron Smotherman. Uh, Pompos is a seven and three Bantamweight athlete fighter, uh, trains out of Sarah Longo, legendary camp. Pompos, thanks for joining us. How are you? Thank you, man. Thank you. Uh, Happy to see you again. Yeah, absolutely. I appreciate you taking the time. You know, we were talking offline and, uh, you know, we got a major week and, you know, we're, we're uh, getting a lot of views, a lot of eyeballs. So we definitely wanted to get you on, you know, to talk about, you know, the contender series. So we talked about it briefly because you, you had thought that it was coming on. Talk to me about that process. How did that call come in? Uh, you know, what, what was that situation like? So, um, look, I was training for the, for the, um, the title fight for five rounds. Uh, and, um, then my, my manager called me, uh, he was like, look, man, we have to put out of the fight. I'm like, why? He said, we are fighting for the contender city. So, um, actually I was expecting the call either like short notice or contender series. I was, I, I, I was, I wasn't surprised. Uh, and then I said, Thank God, because I hate the five rounds fight, man. <laughs> I, I said to my manager, okay, so now I can stop, prepare for five rounds, right? He said, yes, just for three. So I'm like, yeah. I I love it. And, you know, there, there's there been some short notice fights. Obviously, um, you know, at UFC 290, someone in your weight class, Cameron Simon uh, from South Africa, one of Drix's Duplessis, uh, teammates he had his fight with y'all uh if you follow your uh social media uh the ferocious mma uh on instagram you put a story up said hey dana call me for that fight did anything come of, of that fight or do you know how they determine who gets the short notice fight in a spot like that uh no we we don't know anything yet um and to be honest um i check i check that fight uh um like two months ago when they announced the fight and because my um the the Christian Rodriguez I fought with Chris, Christian Rodriguez before right yeah. and uh when I said with the contender series um uh you know he coming un- under my photo and he was like congrats and I said to him look man we have to run it back in the UFC you know a rematch so I was checking that fight and I'm like, okay, man, I, I hope, I hope something changed. Uh, the other guy canceled the fight and then I'm going to jump in for my rematch. And then it, it ended up Christian, uh, Christian Rodriguez canceled the fight. And I'm like, okay, all right, I'm going to, I, I want to jump uh, to fight the other guy. Um, uh, I don't know. Look, we didn't hear anything yet, but, uh, I don't know, man. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I want to fight him. It's going to be a very good fight. Uh, but still, if they don't call me, I hope they're going to call me in the future. Or either way, either way, I'm going to side with the UFC, man. Even now, even if, if I wait for the contender series, I'm going to side with the UFC anyway. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Now, with the contender series, uh you also have the opportunity in your neck of the woods in Boston, UFC 292, where your your teammate, uh, Aljamain Sterling, who, by the way, I want to talk to you about that Lamborghini I saw you in, too. <laughs> I want to definitely talk to you about that. But he's prepping to take on Sugar Sean O'Malley. So now that you have your foot in the door, you could be a short notice replacement fight for UFC 290, probably unlikely because it's, it's this week. Um, you have the contender series August 15th 
And then also you have potentially a short notice fight for August 19th in Boston at UFC 292. Now, you, you had mentioned Christian Rodriguez. Why, why do you want that fight back? Because I, I know it didn't end your way. Was it a close fight? Uh, it was it was a tough fight, man. I, look, I lost. I lost because I won. I wasn't like uh, mentally prepared, you know. Yeah. Um, that's why I lost. That's why I lost. Uh, and I know if we're running back, I'm I'm gonna get the win. But um, anyway, um, not just Aljamain is fighting for uh in Boston, but Chris Whiteman too, uh, is fighting in Boston. So I would love to fight in Boston because you know I'm a champion in Boston. Uh. So it will be br- great if I fight in in Boston, but um, let's see, let's wait, and we'll see, man. I mean, it will be amazing, <laughs> but let's see. Yeah, I actually forgot Chris Weidman is on. He's fighting Brad Tavares yeah. uh, on that on that card as well. Chris being the former uh, middleweight champion of the of the UFC. Now, with say that no short notice fights come on. What are your expect? What is, what does Cameron Smotherman uh, bring to the table? Obviously, uh, you know he's uh, eight and three. He's got five TKOs, one TKO loss, no submissions, no submission losses, three wins, uh, three wins by decision, two losses. Does he present any problems? I was looking at tape of him, um, and it looks like he throws a looping right. And then he, and then his kill shot is that left. I think he's finished two fights at least by that. Is is that the only thing that uh, he presents potentially a problem with, or no? Man, no. You know, and I have this conversation with Ray, uh, with Ray Longo, and I said to him, "Man, look, if I fight my way, in my way, you know, my style, I know I'm gonna win. All right, for sure, but." Should they do anything else, like to get the contract? I mean, to make uh, Dana White, you know, uh, excited. You know what I mean? Uh, and Ray was like, "What? What is your style? Your style? It's what you do in the sparring. This is your style. How you fight?" I'm like, "Yes." He said, "You're gonna, you're gonna side with the UFC if you fight like this." <laughs> if you fight like you're sparring, you're gonna side with the UFC. Um, uh, I uh, Cameron's mother, man, he's a young kid. Uh, all right, tough kid. Yeah, he throws hard punches. But man, I said it before, and I said it in my uh, um, in, in my interview in Dana White. Um, he's young, man. He's gonna come back. Now it's my time. It's not his time. You know what I mean? Uh, I I don't see any problem with him. I'm definitely stronger than him, faster than him. I I my I can do everything, man. Striking, you know, I'm a world class kickboxer. Yeah. Uh, I can wrestle, I can grapple. You know, in my gym, all the wrestlers is in my gym, man. You know, if you if I do wrestling with Al Jami, you know, Merab and uh, those guys, you know, uh, um, it's gonna be like easy for me for the for the wrestling part and the jiu-jitsu part so um i have respect for him but it's not his time and now it's my time yeah you, you mentioned you know obviously you have world-class training partners has sarah longo had anyone else come out of the contender series uh i wasn't sure on that so i figured i'd ask you now you mean this summer? Yeah, before, be- well, before you has there had, uh, had, had any experience like getting people? Yeah, through? yeah, yeah. Uh yeah, many people from from my gym like uh Nazim who signed with the UFC, Charlie, Dennis, uh, Dennis Bazooka, uh, and we do sparring with Dennis like very hard sparring with Dennis. Uh, um, he's very good man. So, uh, uh, you know, we have these uh, high-level um, fighters in my gym, man, and I'm lucky that I have them around me, you know, to help me for the fight. Yeah. Uh, so, yes, now I'm the next one for the contender series. 
We don't know anything about um, somebody else from the gym yet, but we will see. Now, having that experience, has that helped like your legendary coaches, Ray Longo, Matt, Sarah, get you prepped for the moment and everything like that that comes with that? Um, what do you mean? So, ha ha like, the gym has had athletes come to the contender series. So those yeah. athletes that have gone through that moment, been able to, like, prep you, like, mentally and kind of oh, give yeah. you advice, like, what to be prepared for. Because, obviously, the biggest thing with the contender series is that you have to perform and you have to finish. If you do that, you're in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they told me, man. And I remember my teammate Nazim told me it's a unique experience. He said, even it's more unique than the UFC debut, man, he said. I don't know. Probably because there is no crowd uh, and it's your time, man. If you win and uh, you have a good fight, you sign. You have one opportunity and you have to uh, take it, you know. Uh, so, yes, yeah, they told me. I asked him about all the things, about the contender series. Uh, and I have an idea, man. And, and when I went to Vegas to the UFC Apex, you know, I got this feeling, you know. I went behind the doors. I opened the doors to see how 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 is the feeling, and I was so excited, man. I'm like, can't wait. I love it. I love it. And you know, as, as you're talking, how how old is Cameron Motherman? I, I can't find his age. Do you know how old he is? Twenty five. I think twenty five. Yeah. He, he's tw he's twenty five. And then you yourself. I'm sorry. I'm looking this up. Uh, you are uh, thirty one. Thirty one. Right? Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. Now, obviously, you train at a, a legendary camp. Uh, you're training with the current Bantamweight champion after he defeats Sugar Sean O'Malley. I have a friend here who is uh, the number one heavyweight in the U.S. Northeast in the amateur rankings, Matt Kaba. He seems to think Sugar Sean's got it, but I kept telling him, I go, Pompo, Pompos is saying uh -huh. that Eljo's just another level and he's a maniac. And gives yeah. him fits in the training room and, you know, gets him pretty, pretty, you know, like frustrated. Like, hey, what can I do? He can't figure Aljo out. Aljo's just on a completely different level. Then then it looks like Marab is going to be keeping the title in the family. Exactly. And when you're, when you're ready, and I know I texted you this yesterday, I said, hey, when you're selling out T-Mobile Arena, just remember us little guys, <laughs> you get tickets to your sold-out fight. It looks like Sarah Longo's got that lineage to keep that Bantamweight title, you know, right in the family for a little while. Training with someone like Marab for this to contender series moment, what is what does that do for you? Um, look, now, you know, now uh, Marab, he, he did the surgery. We don't like trade with Marab now, but um, with Marab, you feel the pressure of a fight, man. Because Marab is nonstop, you know, nonstop, nonstop, nonstop. And uh, this is how, uh, and he shows you how is uh, the feeling in the fight. Uh, because if you have Marab moving forward all the time, all right, and you know he's gonna shoot, he's gonna shoot, and you uh, defend like 50 takedown. And then he still shoot and shoot, shoot, shoot. I'm like, uh, this is a very good training for me, for, you know, cardio, for strength, for the takedown defense. Uh, because if you have the machine, man, and he shoots every, like, 30 seconds, I mean, it's uh, it's unbelievable. Uh, with Marab, I, uh, I love to spar with Marab because of that. Because of that. Because I'm like, if, if, if he gives me this pressure, because usually when I fight, I move forward, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, but with Merab, man, you have to be smart. <laughs> and you hit, and you hit real hard. You said that in our last interview. You go, I hit real hard, man. Yeah, yeah, I I hit hard, but uh, yes, I mean, if I hit you like, and I I catch you like with my either either left or right. You have problem. <laughs> Love it, and 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 you you know following your Instagram, 
uh, you know, you were out in Las Vegas. I kind of messaged you when you were out there. You were doing some interviews and, and, and you got some training in at the UFCPI. What, what you had mentioned, you walked through the Apex stores and, and you felt like you just belonged. What was it like being in the UFCPI, a state of the art facility for you athletes? Man, it was amazing. I came back and I said to my wife, I got the first taste of the UFC. You know, I'm not going to let it go. You know what I mean? I loved it. I love the, the whole thing. I love Vegas. I love because, you know, Aljamin is there, Merab is there. It's amazing, man. You have a UFC PI training every day. You have everything in the UFC PI, man. It's huge, huge. And I loved it. I'm like, I belong here, man. I love it. And and does the PI provide you guys meals anytime you want, or is it just during fight camp? Uh, look, if you are a UFC fighter, I mean, you have, uh, as I know, you have me, you have meals like drinks. Uh, you have the facilities, sauna, physiotherapy, everything like uh, for free if you are a UFC fighter. That's awesome. Were you able to work with the director Heather Linden at all? No. No. Did you did you meet her? No. So she's the former like U.S. Olympic director for recovery and training and stuff like that. I was just interesting because obviously you know in the real world i uh, i coach crossfit mobility and all that so i was just going to try to see you know what she brings to the table on that but we can talk about that another time and you know i saw you guys do like a tiktok or something <laughs> like that with jamal hill and you know i wasn't even worried about marab and jamal hill i saw you <laughs> rolling with your teammate aljamain sterling what does aljo bring to you for this moment, man, these guys are ridiculous, man. All of them, actually, bro. I mean, no, we we did training, uh, and then after that, we're like, oh, we gotta do a video. We gotta do a video, and I'm like, hey, all right, what should I do? <laughs> and they were, and they were like, okay, Anjo will choke you. <laughs> I'm like, okay, so, um, but man, these guys are amazing. They have fun, uh. And um, especially with uh, Aljamie and Merab, we had so like so good time, man. Uh, because we train together, we train hard, and then we have fun. Uh, and I like to be um, surrounded with these people, you know, mm -hmm. uh, because first of all, they give you different energy. Uh, you wanna be uh, like around. Uh, uh, successful people, you know, uh, and this is what I want to do. That's that's why I I want to move to Vegas, man, with them. You know what I mean? Uh, it's amazing. It's amazing. I love it. Yeah, but now, these people are ridiculous. Say, say that again for me. <laughs> these people are ridiculous, man. All the time they do the TikTok videos. It's really ridiculous. I see it. Were you able to work with the uh, light heavyweight champion Jamal Hill at all when you were out there? Because he was in your video. Did you get any looks? Yeah. Uh, no, no, we didn't work together. Hey, he's big, man. I mean, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, those guys, Marab was doing another TikTok I saw with Jamal Hill when he was on the treadmill, and I'm just like, what's going on? <laughs> what What has Eljo done for you for this camp? What has he uh, taught you? What has he, like, uh, you know, helped you in the moment for? So as I said to the last interview that we had, um, so he's helping me with uh, um, techniques, uh, stuff that I don't know, you know what I mean? Small details, the small details, but the small details are so important, man. Uh, like when we uh, went to the PI, I mean, um, he was showing me, you know, stuff like uh, um, wrestling stuff, as uh, more details that I didn't know, uh, and it's very important. Um, and uh, and except that, he gives me the the motivation, you know, just to be with him, he motivates me. Uh, but with him, I would like to to be with him every day, you know, every day. So you learn something. You learn something every day, man. 
and I'm glad. I'm glad. Now, has Aljo moved to Vegas full time, or is he kind of split in time between Vegas and and the East Coast? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's going back and forth. Yeah, he's going back and forth. So, if if people follow you on Instagram, uh, the Ferocious MMA, uh, they might have seen you in a story that you put on in uh, Aljo's brand new green Lamborghini. Tell me about that. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> It was uh was amazing, man. We were like driving around with the Laborkini. Oh my god. This Laborkini is amazing. And the next day he got the McLaren, man. Uh oh he got a McLaren too? The next day. Yeah. I mean, you know, because he's working with uh, uh luxury cars, with a company with luxury cars. Uh but man, the Labo was a master, it was a monster more. Uh, you saw it, man. It was was amazing. <laughs> How long did uh, he have it? Did Dana give that to him? I know, man. It was a joke. It was a joke on Instagram about Dana. Um, you know, I I told you he's uh, he's working with a uh, with the luxury cars in uh, in Vegas, and they are giving him like different cars to drive. You know. And what were you did you stay at the Aria? When you were out there in Vegas a few weeks ago, was that where you stayed? No, there we went there for a dinner. Oh, okay. Um, what was the look when you guys got out of the out of that Lambo? <laughs> Everyone, everybody was looking at us. You know. <laughs> where Where did you guys go to dinner at Aria? Uh, it's next to where Aria. It's the name is Taco something it's a very nice place man very nice place i don't really remember the name yeah aria aria is great when i saw you were at aria i got extremely jealous and that's when i messaged you i'm like hey if you're there for a while you gotta check out this 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 and this <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You, you have to tell me more because after the fight i'm gonna stay probably to the dara i think dara right it's a area a hotel at where? I think the name is V D A R E. But no, Vidara. So it, it's the suite of Aria. Yeah, yeah. So it's yeah. right next door. So it's actually you can cut down to go to the Cosmopolitan where they have like like Hattie B's, which is the most amazing chicken fingers in town. <laughs> you have egg sluts for dude. I'll get you all hooked up. I'll tell you exactly. Sure. Where to go. And I'll just I'm putting. <laughs> My reputation aligned with you, so I'm not going to steer you the wrong way. <laughs> you, you can't go wrong, but Vidara is 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 great. I, that's where we usually stay. So in the summertime, where we're staying next week, we're staying at Delano at Mandalay Bay because of the pool. And then mm -hmm. in the in the winter time in March and things, we stay at Aria Vidara because it's center. But the restaurants, the atmosphere. It's just it's just good people, good 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 mm. solid people, and MGM does a great job, great great job. So yeah, it's good, you know. But uh, I know you're still looking uh, for some sponsors for Dana White Contender Series to kind of start from the ground floor up on uh, uh, Team Pompos here. Uh, if anybody wanted to uh, get hooked up with you with sponsorship and things, they can reach right out to you on your uh, Instagram at the Ferocious MMA. Just shoot you a message. And uh, you can kind of talk them through those packages and, and things like that, how they can support you, you know, moving forward. Is that right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. It's ground floor. up. I, I really appreciate you taking the time. You know, we have a, we have a busy week, but I, I'm, I'm so excited for your opportunity that you get a couple of weeks uh, later, August 15th uh, on Dana White contender series on, on the second week. It's a big spot. You've been waiting for this spot for a long time. Um, we will absolutely be cheering for you, rooting for you uh, on that August 15th and, and checking in with you constantly. As always, um, you know, I'm going to stop this in a second and then we'll kind of debrief. But, uh, you know, I truly appreciate you taking the time. Uh, we truly believe in you and, and what you got going on, um, but nothing but the best and, and support. OK, thank you so much, man. I appreciate it. All right, buddy.